Kenichi Ogawa versus Joel Cordina for the IBF Super Featherweight title. This is an underrated fight that I haven't heard too much people talk about, especially on my side of the world. Now, it's probably because it's in the UK that my side of the world hasn't talked about it so much, but this is a big fight and I'm looking forward to it. So let's get into it. Let's take a look into Kenichi Ogawa. He's a very patient fighter, good footwork, good pressure fighter. He has a good presence in the ring. And what I mean by that is you can tell the confidence of a person by how they walk into the room, right? Same thing when a fighter walks into the ring, how they move, how they hit, how they respond when they get hit, when they are applying the pressure. The body language says a lot about a fighter in the midst of adversity or when they have their opponent on the ropes. You can tell the mannerisms of a fighter, and that usually compels the confidence in their preparation leading up to this fight. And Ogawa, his preparation is always, always top-notch, and he always shows up and ready to fight. Ogawa, to me, since I started watching him about 10 years ago, he doesn't look flustered. He's very calm, right? And sometimes a little bit too calm at the beginning of a fight, where I feel as if he can impose his will a little bit more and apply more pressure and aggressiveness, right? I like his fight against Fazuli in the fifth round. I was thinking to myself, man, you got to put more pressure on him because you got him fighting off the back foot. And the moment that I said you got to put more pressure on him, that's when he landed that big overhand right and dropped Fazuli, right, with a stunning shot to the chin. And he closed the gap in the distance with one step, right? And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is an explosive and dynamic fighter. Because one second, he's probably five steps away from you. And then the next second, he closes the gap and catches you when you least expect it. And I think that is a great component to the strengths of Ogawa. I also think he's a very dynamic fighter, but I also think he's very well conditioned because in that same fight, you could see him in the later rounds bouncing on his toes, moving around the ring very well, lots of energy. And that's important, right? That says a lot about a fighter's conditioning over his training camp and the period leading up to this fight. Those are the strengths of Ogawa. He's a very precise and accurate puncher, and he doesn't do anything if it's not calculated, right? He's very patient when he gets inside the ring. Now, when he does miss and make his mistakes, he misses pretty badly sometimes and leaves himself susceptible to being countered, right? Ogawa wants to make this fight inside the pocket and keep it close, where he can slip and move in at his own pace. He likes to come forward and be the aggressor and apply the pressure. But if you can put pressure on Ogawa and make him a and make him hesitant to throw and keep him at distance with your jab and follow it up with good combinations to the body, you'll have him fighting off his back foot. Ogawa in his last fight, despite the layoff, looked very good. Ogawa wants to make this fight in the pocket, keep it close where he can slip and move at his own pace. He likes to come forward and be the aggressor and apply the pressure right? If you can put pressure on Ogawa and make him hesitant to throw and keep him at distance with your jab and follow it up with good combinations to the body and have him fighting off the back foot, right? He's a bit of a slow starter at the beginning, but if you can be dominant inside the ring early and have him fighting off that back foot and kind of running away, well, not really running away, but have him backing up so he can't be dynamic, he can't be explosive, but make him a counter puncher. So that way you can have the upper hand on him because he's not going to go away. This is a fighter where you are literally going to have to knock him out for him to not come forward. We know that he's well conditioned. We know he's very precise. We know he's accurate. We know he's well trained and disciplined. If you are going to try to stop him from coming forward, you're either going to have to knock him out or keep him at distance with that jab and slip and move and land the combinations. Right. But there are going to be opportunities when you can land some big shots on uh, Kenichi Ogawa. Let's talk about Joe Cordina, the bronze medalist in the 2004 Commonwealth Games, gold medalist in 2015 European Championships, and he represented Great Britain at the 2016 Summer Olympics, the same Rio Games that I was at. So he's a very ha he's had a very successful amateur career, and in the pro so far, he's coming in with an undefeated record. I must say, I like Cordina. And this is a great opportunity for him to capture a title against a great caliber fighter in Ogawa. Joe looks bigger in this division to me than a lot of the other fighters, right? He's got good size. He's got good pop with each shot against uh, his last opponent, Mike K. I'm going to say K because I can't pronounce his full last name. So I'm going to say K. I thought he showed patience. 
I thought he showed poise. I thought he put on a brilliant performance of boxing, not the brutality of it, but the science of it. He used his jab very well. He used his movement to his advantage. He anticipated where Miko K was going to be and made adjustments to where he needed himself to be. He looked comfortable in the ring. And quite frankly, I thought he controlled the pace of that fight. He's twitchy. He's got good reflexes. He has the reach advantage as well. He has very good head movement. I thought he was very defensively sound for the majority of that fight. And I don't think he's afraid to fight from the inside. I think, honestly, I think he might prefer that, right? If that's where the fight wants to go, I don't think he's afraid to, to not go there. I think he will go there. And I think he will be smart and composed as he is inside the pocket if this is where the fight goes. But in his last fight, he was trying to get inside the pocket, but Miko K wasn't allow, allowing it to go there. Right. And Cordina said, OK, I'll take the fight to him. He put the pressure on him. He decided to be the aggressor. He took a big right hand against Miko in the sixth round. So that shows me that he's got a good chin on him. Right. This is going to be a great fight. I'm looking forward to it. Ogawa is a great fighter. Joe has a killer mentality in him and he and he has a great skill set. Right. And so does Ogawa, along with showmanship. Right. This fight, in my opinion, is going to be the reign of a new champion. They are both quick, both good hand speed, but I think Cordina is the better defensive fighter than Ogawa and a bigger puncher. I think he's going to land the cleaner shots and go to the body a bit more. He puts together better combinations and he has a nice balance between headshots and body shots. He knows not to just headhunt every round, but to chop his opponents down. Now this fight is in the UK, right? So Cordina has home field advantage, right? And if, you, if you've been watching boxing, you know that does has its pros, especially a fighter that the judges may like, right? Ogawa is going to have to fight a hell of a fight to beat Cordina in his home field. If Ogawa can stay patient, right? Use his jab, less lunging shots, right? But be the more precise puncher, be the more accurate puncher. He can land that good right hand that he likes so much. He needs to continue to move around the ring because Miko K frustrated Cordina with his movement in the ring, but he couldn't do much because he was tired. I think Ogawa is much more conditioned than Miko K, right? So I think Ogawa can do the same to negate some of Cordina's work volume, but he needs to set up his shots and not abandon the quick jab that he throws. I also think he needs to go to the body early, right? Joe defensively covers up well if it's a headshot or a chest shot, but the ribs and the liver is open for target. So I'm hoping that that is where Ogawa targets his shot, especially early in the rounds. I'm thinking this fight is going to be a bit slow at the beginning, especially the first three to four rounds before they pick up in the middle rounds. But those early rounds are going to be extremely crucial on the cards. Towards the end of the fight for Cordina in his recent ones, right, he kind of backed off a little bit and slowed down his pace, right? He got a little bit sloppy and actually allowed Miko K to win some of those later rounds. And if he is not fully dialed in and focused from the beginning to the end of the fight, Ogawa could steal some rounds that Cord Cordina could probably take and be dominant in, right? So I think as the fight goes on, um, I think those first three rounds are going to be very crucial, especially on the points. The later rounds are going to be very crucial as well, too. And I think the fighter who is more disciplined, more focused, but sticks to their game plan and doesn't allow the frustration get to them, um, I think is going to win this fight. And that's why I have Joe Cordina winning this fight, in my opinion. I think he's going to land the cleaner shot. I think he has the home field advantage. And I think he knows the opportunity at hand, especially at this time in his career. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, my name is Akeem Haynes. I'm a two-time Olympian author and motivational speaker. And on this channel, on my channel, we talk motivation, inspiration. Uh, we talk boxing, track and field, MMA, and all other various sports. And be sure to subscribe to the channel before you go.